This is a double needle triple feed machine. It's a post bed with reverse. So this is the Konso 389 RV2. It's made in Japan. There's a lot of applications for this machine. It could be used for luggage, awnings, tents, tarps, workwear, bags, upholstery. I featured this machine in a bag making video I did. I'll put a card here. So I'm going to bring you in for a closer look on some of the features of this machine. And I'll do a couple of examples of what it's capable of and how to make some simple adjustments like stitch length and how to use the semi-automatic lubrication system, how to change out needles and how to thread the needles, how to adjust the alternating height of the walking foot, stuff like that. This machine has the large bobbins. Here's a standard bobbin just for comparison. There's a pretty big difference. This is a heavy duty machine. It's designed to do medium to heavy weight materials. So that's why it has the larger bobbins in it so that you can load it with, you know, somewhat larger threads than uh, some other machines. The larger bobbin means you can get more of the larger thread and that keeps you from needing to change the bobbins as often. This machine is triple feed, which means it has drop feed, needle feed, and walking foot. I'll put a card right up here where I talk a little bit more about triple feed. The 389 has uh, a semi-automatic lubrication. Basically that means that there are parts of the machine that need to be manually lubricated. And then there is a, an automatic feature that lubricates the top end parts of the machine. And you engage that by opening this valve here. And then when you're done, you just you have to close it. There's a window right here where you can check your oil level. So I've got the top cover here and this is the uh, sight gauge. You can check the level of the oil that's in the top of the machine. So there's a reservoir in the top of the machine that holds sewing machine oil that supplies the, the semi-automatic lubrication. When you turn on this valve here, if you pull it up and, and turn it into the open position, I'm going to move this to the off position just so you can see what off is. Okay, so that's off. And then you pull it up and turn it. And as long as it's up, anywhere anywhere is, is on. So it's either on or off. And then when you get it back to the position where this dot lines up with the red dot on the top of the cover, it shuts off. Pull it up, turn it. You can see that the, the valve is, is held up and open. And then when you move it to the off position, it moves down. So that's off. And over here, when this is down, it pushes down on this valve here, shutting off the supply of the oil. When you lift this up and this is held up, it allows this spring to hold that valve up. While I've got this open, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of uh, juice up these wicks. So basically you want that line of meniscus to be anywhere between the bottom and the top red lines. So this is good right here. So while it's in the up position, this machine is oiling. You need to remember to shut it back off. 
the gauge of the machine can be adjusted. The gauge just means the distance that the needles are from one another. Right now this machine is set up at a quarter of an inch. Any sewing you do, the two lines will be one quarter of an inch apart from one another. That can be changed. You need to buy parts and install those parts. So let's talk about setting the stitch length. So this is the hand wheel and on the hand wheel there's a gauge and these numbers are stitches per inch. So there's the gauge and then there's this there's this mark that's set into the casing of the machine. So right here is the button in the bed of the machine to set the stitch length. And this is the button you use to reset the safety clutch. So to help us understand what's going on when we push this button, we're going to go underneath the machine. So right here is the cam that adjusts the stitch length. Right back there is the bottom side of that button that's in the bed of the machine. So when I push it, you can see it move. So now I want to rotate the machine. And right here, you can see there's a notch. So when you push down this button and you move the hand wheel, you're moving this notch around. And eventually that notch and the button will line up and the button will click down into place. Right there. Now the button is in that notch. And if I continue to rotate the machine, it causes an adjustment to the cam. So now you can see that because that pin is holding the, the disc, the cam is moving and changing the length of the stitch. And then when you get the gauge set where you want it, you, you release the button. And now everything moves in a unit and it will sew at that setting. So hand wheel, notch, button. So what that looks like from the top of the machine, push the button and rotate the machine until you feel the button go into that notch. All right, right there. I felt the button go into the notch. It, it, it moved further down. And so now I know this button is holding that disc and so any movement I make here now is an adjustment to the thread length so I can make it make the thread length longer or I can make the thread length smaller which are the bigger numbers so once you get it set to where you want just release the button and now it will be sewing at that length and you might have to do a little bit of trial and error to get it right now that you know you know how to do it it's real easy to just make it a little bit longer or a little bit shorter and then you'll you'll get it dialed in the way you want that way so that's how you set your stitch length here we are on the back of the machine and it's right here that we can change the alternating foot height so as the feet walk you can change how high they step or how short they step this is at the top of this slot so it's set for maximum step height so with the 10 millimeter wrench you can loosen that now if I move it down through the slot that's decreasing the alternating foot height that's increasing I typically like to have the feet height at maximum so I'll set it there they can be set up with various um, you know tape attachers like this one uh, tape would come up through here and then just kind of sneak under there and what that would do is that would allow you to come in with the seam like this and you hold this seam open and then tape would be applied to the back side the tape underneath there it reinforces this seam from from pulling open So the tape's coming up this this uh, guide that's been attached to the post bed, and then this tape that 
and has been run up through there just goes underneath the foot when you sew sew material under the foot it gets caught in the stitches So you can see the seam and then uh, two stitches, the top stitches. This makes an attractive seam. And then also you have the tape on the back to reinforce the seam. Now this is a real makeshift setup here that I've, I've done just for demonstration purposes. And probably, you know, with this gauge, you wouldn't use this wide of tape to have all this extra. There's a lot of variations with the size of the tape and tape holder or tape guide. I think a wider gauge would be better for tape this wide. But anyway, you get the idea. I don't think this machine is typically set up for what I'm about to show you, but I, I think it's neat. So jeans, typically you have this, uh, you have this lap seam where the where the two layers are folded in upon each other and that makes a real strong seam so it's you know it's it's four times thick and double sewn and so it's really strong uh, oddly enough though in the same pair of jeans this is just Levi's and I, I think a lot of people a lot of jeans do the same thing uh, on the other side it if I pull it you can see I can expose the seam just by by pulling on a little bit the only strength of a, of a seam like this are the strength of the stitch itself um, you know these are perfectly um, durable you know this is a durable product uh, it's, it's not a slam on them or anything but uh, you know yes there is this very strong lap seam in jeans but there's also this this other seam on this side it's just a regular old chain stitch seam and then it's got a an over edge on it too. This is done on, on a five thread overlock machine. If you are producing a pair of jeans or a sleeve that you want to be a little stronger and you could use something like a post bed and uh, either single needle or double needle depending on what you want your top stitch to look like. Well, I've got this old pair of jeans and I'm just going to demonstrate how you can use a post bed to sew the entire length of a sleeve or a pant leg. I'm just going to follow uh, on the inside of the outer foot the seam and top stitch and the idea is I'm going to attach this piece of the seam to the material itself. So I'm just going to stick my hand up inside this leg. This way I'll be able to manipulate that loose seam over to the side I'm, I'm stitching on. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of bunch up that down onto the post bed as I go. And so that's handy because it keeps the two sides of the sleeve uh, from getting under the foot. So you can see the top stitch has, has caught that, that loose seam, the overedged seam from the original construction. That otherwise uh, loose seam is now attached down. And so in effect what that has done is that is that's tied those two, two halves together with now three rows of stitching. The seam and then the two top stitches have got those locked together. It's capable of going through all the layers of the pocket and even this seam here. So I don't think that's a typical use of a post bed machine. I wanted to show it just to show some of the versatility of a, of a post bed machine and kind of how handy they are. And while they may look a little odd, they sure do uh, allow a person to go into some areas that are often 
difficult to to reach or manage otherwise. I know a lot of people that are in bag making like the cylinder arms and I can understand that but I think everything you can do on a cylinder arm I believe you can accomplish on a post bed and I think you can probably do a few more things on a post bed that you otherwise couldn't really do on a cylinder arm or at least not as as easily as this. So I'm a big fan of the post bed. And so while we're on the versatility of the machine, I'll show you a, an appliance I made. And you just lift the foot and it kind of sets in there. Now you can use this like a, a flatbed. So you'll have the same distance here as a, your typical flatbed. It's easy to put on, easy to take off. This is the back. You know, a table accessory like this is just one more way that you can make a post bed machine even more versatile. So one thing to consider when you're getting set up on a double needle machine is how much thread are you going to need. So you need two spools of thread, one for each needle. And then if you don't want to have to unthread your machine every time you need to wind two bobbins, you better have a a third spool of thread to be winding bobbins as you're sewing a project. Now bobbins fill up a lot faster with the bobbin winder than they do unload into the machine. So you should be able to get two bobbins loaded from one spool of thread before your bobbins in the machine run out. So you'll come off your thread tree and to these pins here. One thing I wanted to touch on is that uh, each needle is installed opposite the other. And what I mean is the orientation or the way it's clocked into the machine is different. So the scarf on the right needle is to the right and towards the hook that it's associated with. And then the needle on the left side, the scarf is on the left towards the hook that it works in conjunction with. So when you install these needles, you need to make sure that the scarf of each needle is toward the hook that it works with. So this needle works with this hook. This needle works with this hook. So if you're not sure what a needle scarf is, uh, I'll put a uh, card up here in the corner where you can learn more about needles and how to install them.